The roommate. Vivify Studio Stories. Running down his index finger on the admission list notice. Hooray. Robert yelled in excitement. I have made it. Robert's name was listed on the 98th number on the college admission list. Robert called his mother home and informed his mother about the good news. Mom, I have made it. I have been admitted to the engineering college finally, exclaimed Robert. Robert went to the admission office and collected his registration and hostel admission form from the office. The form stated from the 28th of September the college would commence and all students could shift into the hostel from the 1st of October. Robert was uber excited for starting his university. Robert was very passionate about his career and was looking forward to starting his educational journey. As days passed by, finally the first day of college arrived. Within the next two days, Robert had to shift in his new residence that was the hostel. Robert packed all of his stuff that he could be needing within the next four years of his graduation. Robert and his mother loaded Robert's stuff in the car and drove towards the airport. Robert waved his mother goodbye and mounted himself on the aeroplane. Within half an hour Robert found himself in the mid-air surrounded by wool-shaped clouds. Robert plane glided through the sky. Within an hour, the plane's wheel touched the runaway in Atlanta. Robert boarded the plane with all his belongings, booked a taxi and headed towards the hostel, his new residence for the next four years. Robert's taxi halted in front of the college hostel where a lanky young man, most probably a warden, waited for Robert. Robert unloaded his luggage, and Potter grabbed Robert's stuff and took the luggage into the hostel premises. Robert's room was on the second floor of the hostel building. The porter unloaded Robert's luggage in his room. Meanwhile, Robert inspected the room. The room had chipped off wall paint, and the whole wall was covered with the pencil scribbles of the previous students who once lived there. It was a medium-sized room with two single beds that were placed on the right and left side of the room. The room had an attached bathroom and all basic necessities of life. Robert withdrew the curtains and stared outside the window that looked into the hostel basketball court. It was a pleasant evening that day. Robert took a deep breath and went into the bathroom to freshen up. Robert felt tired and grimy after his long flight and he thought it would be a good idea to freshen up himself a bit. Robert unpacked his belongings and took out his sleeping wear. He pulled open the shower tap and after 15 minutes of long, freshening up session, Robert turned off the shower tap. He unlocked the bathroom door and stepped into his room, where he found himself staring at his roommate, who just shifted into the hostel room. Oh hey, Robert cried out. So you are Clay my roommate, if I am not mistaken? Yes, Clay exclaimed. Yes, I am Clay. Your roommate for the fresher year. Nice to meet you, replied Robert. Yeah, likewise. Nice to meet you too, replied Clay to Robert. Robert startled with the warmth of Clay's palm while shaking his hand. Clay's hands were warm and sweaty. So can I help you with the unpacking questioned Robert. No it's fine, replied Clay. I am almost done with the unpacking. A loud door knock, startled Clay and Robert. It was the hostel kitchen boy who was holding a tea tray in his hands. The kitchen boy bought the evening tea. Both Clay and Robert grabbed their hot cup of tea, which was scorchingly hot. Sunlight penetrated through the door-drawn curtains. The clock struck seven o'clock o'clock. In the morning, Robert yawned and rubbed his eyes as he made his way to the washroom to get ready for university. It was Robert's first day at his new university. Robert's first lecture was to commence at nine o'clock o'clock in the morning. Robert was excited, but at the same time he knew that engineering was going to be tough and would require a lot of sleepless nights and hard work. But Robert was determined for his successful career. It was past one o'clock o'clock in the afternoon. Robert was having his lunch at the university cafeteria when Clay joined him. Both of them devoured their lunch at the cafeteria. Life at university was the most memorable time, but at the same time, it could be pretty hectic. Robert felt homesick at times, but meeting new people, socializing with them and participating in school events was a larger-than-life experience for Robert. Robert did had a cultural shock when he bumped into people who were attending university from different parts of the world. 
but slowly and gradually Robert adjusted in the new environment of his university. As days passed by Robert, feeling of being homesick gradually withered off. He felt more confident and independent and much stronger emotionally to face the after-university life challenges. Enjoying ice skating on the frozen river near university was the time Robert eagerly looked forward to. Spending cold snowy winters in the hostel and arranging weekly bonfires was Robert and his university friends' favorite time pass. Apart from these extracurricular activities, Robert's time was spent doing assignments and prepare preparing for monthly exams. Robert spent most of his time researching and thinking about what future beholds for him. Most night Robert would spend time researching on companies where he would apply after his graduation. Robert had a focused mindset and all these extracurricular activities didn't detract him. Robert focused on his aim of having a successful career. Robert worked day and night to achieve his goals and dreams. Seeing Robert working so hard did made Clay a little insecure of his future at times. Robert had rigid, focused and determined personality, whereas Clay on the other hand was easily distracted by these extracurricular activities going on in university. Clay was weak-minded and lacked determination and often lost his sense of direction in life. This led to Clay being vulnerable and insecure in terms of his personality. Clay spent most of his time amongst friends dining out and partying. Studies for him became secondary at the mid of fresher year. Clay indulged himself in partying, drugs and alcohol abuse. Due to which Clay's grades fell and he frequently started failing his exam. When Robert was researching late hours on universities, Clay was partying and indulging himself into bad habits. One midnight, when Robert was fast asleep in his room, Clay woke up in the middle of the night and went out of the room. When he returned, Robert questioned about his whereabouts and clearly told him that he just went for drinking water. Alarm went off early morning and Robert scrubbing his eyes made his way to the washroom to get ready for his first lecture of the day. As soon as Robert stepped out of the washroom, a group of people barged into Robert's room and started shouting there has been a murder in the hostel. Robert was taken back by hearing this news. A murder? Questioned Robert. There has been a murder on the fourth floor. The guy is a third year named Anderson. In the morning when the kitchen boy went into Anderson's room for the morning tea. He found Anderson's body drowned in the bathtub. All classes for today has been cancelled due to the murder. Police has been informed and they will soon arrive to do the autopsy. Robert quickly ran out of the room and climbed the stairs to the fourth floor where the murder had been taken place. As Robert entered Anderson's room, Robert found Anderson, pale body lying on the room floor. Robert couldn't believe his eyes that his university senior has been found dead in the hostel premises. The ambulance and the police car serene echoed throughout the hostel premises. The police arrived and barged into the room. The police inspectors covered the dead body of Anderson and took it for autopsy. Due to the murder the classes were cancelled and students were suggested to stay indoors and to keep their eyes open for any suspected murderer on the loose. Clay, Robert and their friends stayed in their room for the latter part of the day. Discussing the recent murder, a wave of terror spread throughout the hostel premises. All extracurricular activities were cancelled and hostel premises were sealed and was kept on high alert. After weeks time, everything came back to normal. The classes were restored and the students started following their regular routine. Anderson was being highly missed amongst his fellow colleagues and class fellows. A nameplate had been hanged at the entrance of the college premises in memory of Anderson. Condolences were being sent to Anderson parents from all the students at the college. The college life came back to normal again. It had been three weeks since Anderson murder took place. The police were still investigating the case and visited college premises frequently. No fingerprints or any sort of clues had been found relating to the suspect. The police are trying their best and had interrogated everyone in the hostel and university. Monthly exams were just around the corner. Robert and Clay both started preparing for their exams. After Anderson's death, all school events were banned, which left Clay with no option except to study hard for the upcoming midterms exam. If Clay didn't work hard, he might have to repeat this semester. 
Robert, on the other hand, was already doing well academically. One night Robert's sleep was interrupted by loud screaming sound. Robert startled at hearing the sound. He hurried out of the room, Robert heard. Robert's heartbeat paced faster on hearing the voice. As Robert hurried towards the direction from where the sound was coming from, Robert made his way towards the basketball court. Robert was stunned by the horrible sight. As he reached the basketball court, he found a body lying in a pool of blood on the floor. Robert and few of his fellow colleagues who came outside hearing the shouts rushed towards the static body that laid on the floor. It was Mark a fourth-year final student. It seemed as if Mark had fallen off the twelfth floor of the hostel. Robert checked Mark's pulses, but he found Mark to be dead. Mark was found dead on the basketball courtyard. Ambulances and police inspector rushed to the university premises. Mark was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Due to falling off the hostel building and due to internal injuries, Mark lost his life on the spot. The students were taken back by shock seeing Mark. Two deaths had taken place back. To back at university, a wave of terror took the university administration. Clay and Robert both of them startled at witnessing the accident. The medical staff took Mark's lifeless body out of the premises on an ambulance. Next day the whole university was talking about Mark's mishap. A 30 minutes of mourning session was kept in remembrance of Mark. Every student attended the session. Clay became quiet scared after the incident at college. Robert, on the other hand, was in a state of shock himself. If this condition continues, the college would soon have to shut down exclaimed Clay. Robert nodded in agreement. First Anderson and now Mark has gone. These accidents will give shivers to every student on the university. Let's hope there aren't more accidents like this. Robert prayed. After Mark's accident, the patrolling of the police on the university premises became more frequent. New guards were placed on all entrances of the premises, security check was kept tight in the university, all exams were postponed. And so were all the events. Only lectures were being delivered, all hostilities were informed of, to keep their eyes open if they find any one suspicious person at the campus, the college was on red alert. All students were being checked by the guards for any weapon or any sharp instrument. The curfew state for a month when another murder occurred. This time it was George, the third-year student. George was found in his room lifeless. George had gotten stabbed by a sharp instrument. Due to the stabbing, George died of internal rapture of veins that led to internal bleeding, which resulted in immediate death. Things were going out of control at the university with such high security alert murders were still taking place. Soon a warning alert was given that a serial killer was on a loose at the university. Everyone was allowed to quit university and to evacuate the hostel until the killer was arrested. If he had committed three murders under such tight security, surely he would be capable of committing more murders as well. So it is best to evacuate and to leave college. For security reasons, all events, exams and lectures were postponed for the next year. Robert and Clay as being host lights were in more danger. Robert decided to dismiss university and join some other university instead. Robert packed his stuff, and so did Clay. Robert was evacuating college within two days, while Clay would be evacuating college within a week's time. Robert's train was scheduled for three o'clock o'clock in the afternoon. Next day, Robert was returning back home. Robert made sure he had packed everything the night before. Robert, after packing his stuff, went to bed, whereas Clay stayed up late night. It was two o'clock o'clock in the morning when Robert heard the shattering noise. As Robert woke up, he found pieces of broken glass on the floor, and saw Clay heading out of the room. Where are you heading? inquired Robert. Clay startled a bit for a second. Well, just for a glass of water. Feeling a bit thirsty, replied Clay. Robert turned off his light lamp and went to sleep. Clay, on the other hand, went for a glass of water. Robert turned and saw an empty glass lying beside his bed. Robert thought of Clay as he had broken his glass, so how would he drink water? Robert grabbed the glass and headed behind Clay. Robert went to the hostel kitchen but he couldn't find Clay there. 
Robert headed towards the hostile water cooler area, but Clay was not there either. Where could be at this time if he is not in the kitchen neither he is in the water cooler area? Robert questioned himself. Robert heard a door slam, that came from the first floor of the hostel. Robert climbed upstairs. As he was strolling in the first floor corridor, he saw Clay coming out of Olivia's room. Olivia was. Robert Badge fellow. Olivia was in the fresher year. Robert hid behind the sofa of the hostel TV lounge. Clay looked sweaty and his walking pace was faster than usual. When Clay descended downstairs, Robert quickly walked towards Olivia's room. Robert silently opened Olivia's room door. As soon as Robert stepped into the room, Robert cupped his mouth to refrain himself from screaming. Robert found Olivia's body lying motionless on the armchair. Robert quickly clenched. Olivia wrist, but her heart pulse was static. It seemed as if Olivia was suffocated to death. Robert vigorously shook Olivia, but her body just leaned over lifelessly. Robert was in a state of shock seeing the whole situation. It was clear all this time Clay was the one behind these heinous crimes. Robert unlocked Olivia's room door and alerted the security guards. The security guards barged into Robot's room and took Clay into custody. Clay tried to escape the clenches of the guards but was unsuccessful in running off. The security handcuffed Clay and took him into custody. Later it was found that an unidentified serial killer was on a loose in Munich City, and police were looking for that killer. And it turned out that killer was Clay, who escaped Munich City and flew all the way to Atlanta. Clay's real name was Steven Berg and he suffered from a mental disorder. He already had committed this on sort of heinous crimes before in Munich. To escape the police, Steven Berg shifted to Atlanta. Stephen was already charged of kidnapping and smuggling. Now he was also convicted of four murders. The police took Stephen and lock him up in jail. Stephen was sentenced to 20 years of jail, fine of $15,000 and death sentence for the murders. On the other hand, Robert was hailed as a hero at university and was awarded a medal for his bravery. Hey there! Beautiful bookworms don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Your likings helps this channel a lot. Have a great good night's sleep.